Hi, this is Justin from Hotspot Nuking, and today I'm going to show you a small streams leader and setup that can be easily adapted to Euro Nymphing, Micro Streamers, Dry Droppers, and Dry Fly Fishing. So let's get to it. <laughs> This is easily my most used setup when I'm fly fishing for trout in my area. We have smaller streams and I'm generally making presentations less than 20 feet away. I fish long leaders and stuff from the competition anglers, but I haven't needed the extra distance or sensitivity. I've not seen many of these shorter leaders much, but they provide great versatility and they're easier to use and control in tight spaces. If you've watched my videos, you probably know that I use my 10 foot 308 syndicate for all my micro streamers, your nipping, dry droppers, and just about everything. This rod has great sensitivity, but also a solid backbone for secure hook sets and then landing big fish. The reel I use with this rod is the Lamson Speedster. This reel has a really large arbor. It reduces the coiling of the line and leader inside of it. It also balances the syndicate rod very well. Before I switched to the speedster, I had issues with the line slipping out from right here on the reel, but it hasn't slipped out since I changed this reel. On the reel, I have backing to a Eurofly line to my leader. The Euro line is a level or almost level fly line that is very thin, enabling extra sensitivity and no sag, which results in more of a contact style presentation. The Euro line is important for this leader setup, but there are other formulas you can use if you don't have a Euro line. As someone who loves to throw a streamer, nymph rig, and dry fly all in the same outing, I like the Euro line paired with this leader I'll show you. While the line is not perfect for any one of these, it performs all of them very well. There are some regulations in some of the places I fish in Pennsylvania and Virginia on your overall leader length. And without a Euro line, you'll need to build your leader so that you don't have any fly line coming out of the guides because a regular tapered fly line is just too much weight in between the guides. It'll create sag and that'll create a disconnect and you'll lose a lot of sensitivity. I've continuously developed this leader setup over the past summer, fall, and winter, and I simply just changed my tippet to adjust fishing, micro streamers, nymphing, and dry droppers. This is my favorite leader for getting all of these techniques done. This is a diagram of the leader, and it's a pretty short for a Euro leader, and that's because I like having all my Euro line outside of my guides as much as possible. Just a preference. I feel like I have better control if one level thing without any knots is inside my guides, and that gives me a smooth drift, smooth casts, and easier line management. The first section of my leader is a three foot section of 10 pound fluorocarbon. You can use mono by like fluoro because it has really good abrasion resistance and it also seems to keep a little bit less memory. I use a monocore fly line so I strip the last two inches of coating off the line and then blood knot it to the first section of leader. If you have issues with the fly line or the leader coiling, take it and pull on it to get that memory out. The second section of leader I use is a three foot section of eight pound monofilament. The reason I use monofilament on this section is because fluorocarbon actually sinks. When I float the cider, I prefer the leader to lay on top of the water nicely. Mono doesn't sink and allows me to have an easier drift without part of the leader starting to sink and making strike detection weird. Next, I attach my cider. I found that I like a 6 inch section of red cider, then a 6 inch section of yellow cider. I get that off of a 1x spool of ASO strike indicator line, and that alternates between the red and yellow. In the winter, I'll generally add two sections of the red and yellow cider, just because I'm not going to be spooking fish near the surface, and an extra visibility does help out a lot. That is then blood knotted to my favorite section of cider, 
and that is an opaque white. This is the Cortland 0.01 that matches the diameter of my red and white very well. And then that is clinch knotted to a tippet ring. And I use a two millimeter tippet ring, which is very small, but that allows me, I won't be cutting back into the cider. I'll just be tying my tippet off that tippet ring and I can cut, cut it off and tie new ones on whenever I wanna change tactics. Off the tippet ring, I like to use three to six feet of tippet and would much rather go longer and just hold the cider up off the water. For nymphing, I use three to four feet of 5X and then blood knot it to another section of 5X and leave one of the tags really long and I will tie my fly off the tag and then my point fly will come off the end of the line. Just take a look at the water and make an educated guess on how long your tippet should be. If you're getting hung up a lot, shorten it up a little bit or go down in weight of your flies. And if you're not getting down, increase the weight of your flies or add a little bit extra tippet. A lot of times I only use one fly as well. I'll just tie that on the end and I'll, I'll just have the tag right there which is the same thing I do for a micro streamer. I tie the micro streamer off that and I'll leave that tag long. A lot of times that doesn't matter unless the sun is very bright and that'll actually create a little bit of glare and it'll affect some light off this tag. And that's not that great, that'll spook fish. So if there's a ton of sun, I'll generally cut that tag short if I know I'm gonna be fishing just one fly or a micro streamer a lot. For dry droppers, I tie my dry fly on this tag and then my nymph below that and I'll create a V whenever I'm drifting it through the water. This setup is amazing for small streams and aggressive fish, but if I know I'm going to be rowing nymphing to a little bit further to timid trout and larger rivers, I'll change the first section of 10 pound and I'll make it around 15 to 20 feet. And that'll make it a really long leader, which allows me to have amazing sensitivity and also be able to drift a little bit longer because this weighs a lot less than the fly line. That's not necessary most times and I'm making presentations less than 20 feet away. And if I need to extend my drift further to a certain spot, I can either float the cider or I use a dry dropper. Overall, this is a pretty light setup but it's incredible how much tipper protection the Syndicate rod has, and I can horse a pretty good fish in pretty quickly. And the faster you bring the fish in, the better it is on them, and they tend to be very acrobatic when you're bringing them in quickly and putting pressure on them. I hope you learned something, or at least enjoyed the video. Please put questions or what you like to use in the comment section below. If you'd like me to make a video about something in particular, leave that in the comments as well. I love getting video ideas from you guys. Thanks for watching. Hey then, this dead drifting. Looks like a nice brown. Nice one, yeah, that's a good fish.